And so now we'll begin this morning's forum with candidate Walker making his opening statement. Mr. Walker. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. As you mentioned, I'm Scott Walker. I'm running for governor. I run for governor because I love the state and I believe in Wisconsin. But I also believe that this government's taken us in the wrong direction, at least under this current governor and the legislative majorities in the state assembly and the state senate. And it's really a pleasure to be back here in Kenosha again, in Kenosha County, I should say, to talk about this. Uh, I, uh, I have some good roots here. In fact, I was kidding with Lynn this morning. My first aide when I was in the state legislature, uh, Lynn Wilk, was then a Lynn Casey, even before marriage. I was from Kenosha, so, uh, and then when she left, she passed it on to another Kenosha person, Mark Rapentine, so somehow I'm well rooted uh, here in Kenosha County. Uh, but in addition to that, I think over the times, uh, I've many times coming down here not only for political events, but for social events, speaking at scouting events, I'm proud to be an Eagle Scout, and uh, like to point out when I go over to the Italian American Center that my wife is Sicilian, so I feel quite at home uh, in Kenosha County, but probably most of all for me is, I grew up down the way in Delaware, down Highway 50. Later, we're going to be in Lake Geneva at an event, uh, not too far. In fact, if you keep going, we see go by, uh, head over toward Brett Davis's direction. But I'm, I'm proud uh, to be uh, uh, raised not too far away from here. Uh, proud to have served and worked with Sam Kirkman and have her support and others in this area. But really proud to be back with so many friends and supporters and others here in Kenosha County. I'm going to spend just a couple minutes because we're going to spend the majority of our time in questions. But tell you about what I'd like to see in the future here. As growing up in Delaware, I take a little bit of those small towners, I call them brown bag roots, and apply it not only to what I do today, but what I'd like to do as your next governor. In fact, I have three kind of overriding guiding principles that come out of that brown bag philosophy. One is uh, don't spend money that you don't have, which would be nice in both the state and the federal government. Second, a smaller government is better government. And third, people, like the people, all of you here in this room, create jobs, not the government. I think talk, far too many politicians think it's the other way around. They think that government creates jobs. Government doesn't create jobs. It creates an environment that is either better or worse, positive or negative, for creating a better business environment and ultimately for creating more jobs in this state. I think we need to do a fundamental series of things to change that philosophy, to get, this, uh, to get the cost of business down. And it starts with things like cutting taxes. Cutting taxes on employers, on individuals, having kept off property taxes, even things as simple as phasing out state taxes on retirement income so that more of our income stays in the state and not in Texas or Tennessee or Arizona or, or uh, Florida. Secondly, we've got to cut through the red tape. There are too many regulations in government. I hear that all the time. In fact, in many ways, for many small and mid-sized employers, that's a bigger challenge than even the cost of, of taxes and the burden of taxes in the state. It's eating through that regulatory burden so that a permit that takes two days one time doesn't take two weeks and then two months some other time. It's got to be consistent. It's got to be predictable. It's got to be science-based. We've got to make sure we eat through the litigation burden in the state. You know, the states across this country that have seen, even in the last couple of years, a greater abundance of jobs and a greater state stability when it comes to the budgets of states that have lower tax burden, uh, that have had a lower litigation and regulatory burden, those are the states where job growth has come down. The other three things are about uh, having a world-class education system, be it in a public school setting, be it in a private school setting, or even in a home school environment. There are thousands of reasons to be for that. I have two. Matt and Alex, my two sons, are in high school at Wauwatosa East, but for every parent, for every grandparent in this room, you know how, what an immoral imperative it is to have a great education system. But for all of you, as well as employers, you know about the economic imperative to ensure that we have a world-class education system as well, because that has been one of our competitive advantages in a global uh, economy, is have a well-trained, well-prepared workforce. We can't let that go. Fifth up, it's about health care. Again, we'll probably talk some more in detail as I assume some of the questions, but I believe, unlike Washington, you know, we in Wisconsin have high quality and high access when it comes to health care. Our biggest challenge that I hear from people across the state, from employers, is the cost, the cost of providing health care to employees. We need to tackle that issue with market-driven solutions, not government mandates. And finally, we've got to have a strong infrastructure system in the state that means reliable and cost-effective power, and it means a transportation system that is based on fixing our roads and bridges and byways so we can get our product from not only one part of the state but one part of the region to the other. I think as you look at, and we talk about this, my record as the county executive having cut taxes, uh, having held the line, and actually cutting the property tax, blocking sales tax increases, reducing our debt, reducing the size of workforce, improving our bond rating, 
doing all that at a time when the state had its largest budget deficit ever, we even had a surplus. I think that shows you that nobody else out there has inherited a problem more similar in size and scope to what the next governor will face. And we've done it successfully in Milwaukee County. We can take on the machine there, there's no doubt. We can take on the political machine in our state's capital and win for all the taxpayers of this great state. Thank you.